Hello everyone and welcome to this quick walkthrough of Acolyte on Mac OS. Uh, I just want to take you quickly through um, using Acolyte on Mac. Uh, this Mac is running Catalina and so there's some important security um, considerations that we have to do if we're using a Mac. So uh, first if you haven't used Acolyte before it is a processor for Landsat 5, 7, and 8 and Sentinel 2 imagery. Uh, the nice thing about this is if you're looking to do some coastal work, you want, uh, say, surface reflectances for uh, water bodies, um, and you want to do atmosphere correction, this is, this is a great way to do it. Another thing that I like about Acolyte is that it's much faster than using something like CentuCore. Uh, I've used the Snap software myself, but I find this to be a little more intuitive. Um, in, in, my, uh, in my usage, and also the, the fact that you can merge data, which we'll get into, uh, can be really powerful. So first, if you haven't, and I'll put this in the YouTube description, but please feel free to go to the Acolyte website and take a look. Uh, you have the manual here, and then you have binaries or installers for Windows, Linux, and Mac. We're just going to click on the Acolyte for Mac. It will start the download process. Now, if you look here, you can see it's downloading. My internet connection is okay, uh, so it'll take a few more seconds. You can see I've downloaded it here already. If I go to my downloads here, you'll see the tar file, which I downloaded a little bit ago just to have something prepared. And if I double click on that tar file on a Mac, it will automatically unzip. So it'll use the unzip program on the Mac. And it will go through as it's doing right here using the archive utility and unzipping or expanding this file. This will take a little bit of time. Note this is something called a tar file. It is a type of compressed file format uh, that's commonly used for uh, transferring files uh, via the internet. So you can see it's, it's currently uh, expanding out these uh, files and so you can see um, also the um, if I were to wait until um, the download was done it would, it would actually have already decompressed Safari so would decompress it for me uh, but I forced it like so so now you can see this folder Acolyte PY Mac and you can see in here config data and dist now by default if I were to try to open this so if I were to say click on this uh, alias which is a link um, and I double click on this it will give me this error. Acolyte cannot be opened because the identity of the developer cannot be confirmed. To get around this, the most important thing to do is to use a specific line. So I'm actually going to X out of this version of Acolyte that I have running. And I want to show you this. Um, this, is, this is a very critical uh, thing that I'm suggesting you to do. Uh, mainly because to use Acolyte on the Mac, you would have to not only enable the Acolyte binary, the file that it's, it's using to, to run, but all of the libraries in Python. And to show you really quickly what the number of libraries that you would have to enable looks like, if you go inside the downloaded file and then dist, so Acolyte PY Mac, dist, and Acolyte, all of these files have to be um, accepted uh, and many of the files inside of each of these have to be accepted I think it's a like a, a thousand or so I, I, at least a few hundred I mean if I control a or uh, command a and look at how many files this is um, it's a lot right so so it's not certainly not something where we want to eat, go through and manually allow each of these so what this allows you to do this says, uh, this is the, and you can actually look up the uh, documentation SPC um, for this command line. Uh, you could also use the man. Uh, oh, this is, we shouldn't go to that. Uh, let's go here because my clock is actually not. Ah, yes, that's okay. I, I would need to fix my, my clock here. It's, uh, um, it's actually not correct today. It, it's currently not 1049 a.m. Uh, but if I wanted to, I could also just use man here, SPCTL, man SPCTL, um, and you could learn about 
the uh, security assessment system policy. And what I've done, you can use Q to leave the manual page if you've brought it up. And so what this does is it disables all of the security around installing unknown uh, programs on your Mac. You may want to enable this after you've done after you're done using Acolyte. So, so this is something to definitely consider um, for you to do. So now I've disabled it. So if you just run sudo, and I'll actually make a a um, I can I can provide this in the description as well. Um, but but you should definitely go through and disable this and then re-enable it when you're done. So once you do this, um, and I've actually removed. So if I ls or list my files. What I've done is I've copied this, this folder right here, and I've copied, I just dragged it into applications. The reason why is because I like to have my applications in applications. If I'm gonna use Acolyte often, I wanna leave it in, inside of applications. So here I am, I'm inside, so if I print working directory or PWD, you can see I'm inside applications, Acolyte, PY, Mac. And what I can do from here is I can ls to look at my files. I see the same thing, Acolyte config, data, and dist. The first thing I might want to do is I might want to call Acolyte. So I want to use the graphical um, utility first. And in this case, it's dist Acolyte Acolyte. And so if I run this, I will see this graphical utility. Now the benefit here is that if you have a certain type of file that you want to work with and you say want to um, want to preset it to a certain value what you can do is you can use the graphical interface to edit this acolyte defaults.txt file so one of the nice things is that here inside of config we see this acolyte defaults file I'm just going to open this with text edit and this is all of the default settings so for example I mentioned merging if you go through these settings and you choose uh, let's see if you choose merge tiles and you were to switch this to true and you also provided a um, section where you've actually highlighted the region that you want to work in uh, you can actually produce a merged thing and I'll make another video on on how to merge and why we want to merge um, uh, later but this is just to get us started this is how you change the default settings if you're having trouble with L2W masks you might want to look at some of these parameters uh, so I know a lot of people reached out to me having issues with L2W stuff uh, you can you can definitely go through and try to figure that out. Another thing to note, see how it says questions? Visit our Acolyte form. Click on there and you can ask questions via this form. And I find it very useful um, uh, for asking questions. They're extremely responsive and really helped me out. Okay, so now we got around all of these security issues on the Mac. Um, we we have this running we could select our files our inputs and outputs and it would run one thing to note is that it's using software OpenGL only because I don't have a graphics card on this machine if I had a, a graphics card attached to it it would um, it would be running much better so if I had a 15 inch MacBook Pro or something like that believe me that would be much nicer so um, this is your introduction to getting started with Acolyte on the Mac. My name's Kyle. I hope that was helpful to you. And feel free to reach out if you have any questions at all. Um, and I'm happy to help. So thanks for your attention.